Number 10, eyes closed. Often when you see Ballora in the game, she appears to have her eyes closed. While other animatronics often have their eyes wide open, there is something unsettling about the fact that her eyes are often closed. It's like she's lulling you into a sense of safety. You don't think that she's always watching you, but even with her eyes closed, she kind of seems to be. Because she can still hear you. Number 9, Baylor. Due to her eyes being closed, some have actually theorized there is a connection between her and the mythological demon or creature known as Baylor. The fact that her eyes seem to be permanently shut and even unable to open at times is a fact that people focus on, and this as well as the similarity to her name, Ballora, is where the theory comes from. Though it is more likely that her name is simply a reference to the fact that, you know, she's a ballerina. In Irish mythology, a Baylor is a giant cyclops who only opens its single eye when it wants to destroy its enemies. Otherwise, it is known for having its eyes shut because it's basically shooting a beam out of it when it's open. In Dungeons and Dragons, a Baylor is a demonic creature, often pictured with horns and wings. People also might be pulling the name Baylor from Finn Baylor's demon persona in WWE. Does Scott like WWE? <laughs> Could there be a connection there? <laughs> I don't know, but when I read this theory, I definitely was like, wait, like demon like Finn Balor demon? Also, is it weird that I know that? Number eight, motivation. In the Sister Location game, you are forced to shock Bellora into dancing at the beginning of the game, forcing her to perform. The frightening thing about this is the fact that you already know from the previous games that the animatronics are often out to kill you, so being forced to shock Bellora into performing seems like a bad idea and makes you feel like you are definitely going to end up dying on this job, which you probably will at least a few times, or you'll probably come close. At 7, he is William Afton. His name is William Afton, and for one reason or another, he ended up killing kids and then stuffing them into animal-themed robotic suits. While that hasn't directly been confirmed, we can get as close as we can with some keen observation. Aside from the obvious, that being the similar MO to Afton, the stuffing kids in suits like Glitch Trap does in the Pizza Party ending, the color of the bow tie and eyes, particularly the eyes since they're the windows to the soul, but we can get even more confirmation with the Curse of Dreadbear, the Halloween DLC to Help Wanted. In this DLC, we can see Glitch Trap once, and it's on the hill next to the FNAF 4 house on the loading screen. You know, like that hub thing where you pick the games? If you press the button at the back of the monitor and then turn around to look at the car for 10 seconds, you will turn back around to see Glitch Trap doing his creepy freaking dance on the hill that's next to the hill that has the FNAF 4 house. So he's on a different hill, but it's like next to the other hill. We know for a fact that Scott uses his next game to clarify things from his last one, and with another 15 games and a whole new ending, that being the Corn Maze ending, this DLC is basically a new game. And him intentionally putting Glitch Trap next to the FNAF 4 house is pretty much confirmation. Plus, if you turn around to look at the car again, you will see that the car headlights change from white to purple. Adding yet another layer of confirmation, but also potentially hinting at the fact that it was indeed William in the purple Midnight Motorist car. Number 6, More Aware. Some animatronics in the game seem to speak to you through pre-recorded lines. In fact, a good number of them do that. Circus Baby, however, is not one of them, as she is possessed by William Afton's daughter, Elizabeth, and seems to be more in control of her thoughts, her words, her actions. However, Ballora also displays sort of this level of awareness when compared to the other animatronics. She talks to you when you are in the vents underneath her gallery, and her words and phrases seem to be outside of any pre-recorded voice recordings that she might be programmed with. This either means that Ballora could also be possessed, or that she simply has more advanced programming than some of the other animatronics. Number five, follows you home. So even if you manage to unlock the fake ending or alternate ending and survive your night in the private room, Ennard will still appear after the season finale of your soap, The Immortal and the Restless, which ends on a very strange note. You can see the animatronic drag itself into your living room as its eye flickers on and off. So either way you slice it in Sister Location, you cannot escape Ennard and the animatronics of Circus Baby's entertainment and rental. Number four, her different jump scares. All of her jump scares are different, but equally terrifying. Some are jump scares where her face and eyes remain closed, while in others her face actually simply opens up but her eyes still remain closed. But she also has jump scares where both the inside of her face and her eyes are also revealed. The only thing that isn't scary about this fact, that she actually has really, really pretty like purple eyes. Is it just me? I always wanted to have purple eyes when I was younger. I was like, man, I wish I was born with purple eyes. Then I realized that's not really a thing. 
There aren't really people that are bored with purple eyes. Yeah, three, the plan. There is some form of overarching plan to the resurrection of William Afton. Like how seasons of TV shows have one main villain and then they deal with it over 20 episodes or whatever, while also dealing with the week-to-week -week villains. These games won't be different in that regard. Someone intentionally sought out the hard drives for the company to scan, potentially knowing that William left his consciousness inside. And William has some sort of plan in game, whether Map Hat is right and it's trying to start a cult in his name, or if he uses your body to escape the game, or if he needs the souls of people with the original names of his victims. Think of the beta testers before you, Jeremy and Tate girl, potentially named Susie. There is a plan in motion by the end of Help Wanted, but what is it? Only Willie knows, and he ain't talking. Number two, crawling. Scott actually has confirmed that Ballora actually only has two ways to move. She's either gliding around on the tracks, dancing gracefully, or when not on the tracks, is forced to crawl around on all fours, like some kind of creepy spider. He also confirmed that she can climb up walls like Mangle. Talk about facts to keep you up at night. Now I'm just gonna be laying in bed at night, thinking that when I wake up, I might just see Ballora crawl onto my ceiling, have her face open up at me. Ugh. Number one, Mini Renas. During the game Sister Location on night three, you also get introduced to Ballora's Mini Renas. These are small, kind of alternate versions of Ballora. They don't really quite look like her, kind of like her minions, except that they often seem to be more busy antagonizing Ballora, like when they're holding up her pieces, as opposed to helping her except they kind of seem to be more busy antagonizing Ballora as opposed to always helping her. On night three, you see them holding up Ballora's dismantled parts on the stage, prompting the AI who guides you through the game to seem content in the fact that Ballora appears to be in working order. <laughs> she's not. It does not register the fact that she's dismantled. It only registers the fact that she's on the stage and mistakes her presence for her being functional. So apparently that's good enough for it. Later on, the mini arenas will become freed from Ballora and proceed to come after you. Number 10, Tangled Mess. So the creepy thing about Ennard and the way that it looks is it's kind of just a mess. It almost looks broken or disrepaired, like a not complete animatronic, due to the fact that it is a bunch of animatronics kind of mushed together somehow. Most animatronics have wires in places that resemble living tissue, like muscles, but Ennard is composed of clumps and messes of wires, looking as though they belong to various different animatronics, based on the fact that they are all different colors and different thicknesses, and they're not properly wound or woven together, it seems. Its feet even have six toes instead of four or five, with four thicker wire toes together and two spindly wired toes kind of sticking out on the sides of each foot. Number nine, eyes. Ennard being an amalgamation of animatronics also is covered in eyes. Some have even recognized these eyes in terms of which animatronics they belong to. The blue eye hanging from the right side of Ennard's head likely belongs to Funtime Freddy. The yellow eye on his bicep is supposed to belong to Funtime Foxy. The pink eye on Ennard's waist is from Bon Bon, and the green eye on his leg appears to be Circus Babies. And of course, the purple eyes often seen in Ennard's head appear to belong to Ballora. Now why Ennard felt like it needed so many eyes? Well, no one knows. I guess more to see you with? I guess maybe so like every animatronic that's a part of it can still see? Do they see out of different eyes? Number eight, mask. Ennard can be seen in the games both with a mask and without one, depending on which game and which scenario we're talking about. However, the frightening white mask you are likely familiar with when it does have a face, the primary control area is one of the locations in FNAF Sister Location, which is of course where we first see Ennard. This mask is one of the ones that you see in the bottom left corner, which seems to blink throughout the time that you're in the control area. It's creepy. The mask consists of four faceplates and has a bright red clown nose, as well as a couple of rounded ears. Number seven, singing. Ballora is said to be a talented dancing and singing animatronic. Her goal is to get children active and dancing to balance out all that pizza that they enjoy. You get to experience her singing firsthand in Sister Location, where you will hear her sing out in a very creepy voice. She appears to mainly focus on one melody, and one of the lines that you can hear her sing in the game is as follows. I roam these halls alone all day, but now you're here, friend and pray. Ugh. Pray, I don't like that. She also sings about hearing your flesh and bones. Yikes. 
you. Number six, the real ending. One of the scariest things about Ennard is that it plans to use your skin as a disguise to escape the world and assimilate itself into the living world. In the real ending of the game, if you follow Circus Baby's directions exactly, you will end up in the scooping room, where you will be scooped, which, as horrifying as it is, Circus Baby's voice attempts to reassure you it only hurts for a second. <laughs> it only hurts for a second having your guts pulled out of you. When you wake up, you appear to be at home, but your eyes are revealed to be a bright purple in your bathroom mirror, which lets you know that Circus Baby, obviously with Ennard, was successful in escaping the facility through you. Inside you. You. Halfway through at number five, stuffed. In the pizza party ending, assuming you don't have the Christmas update and are playing in VR, your only option is to follow Glitchtrap onto the stage, where we will promptly be killed and placed into a Freddy animatronic, where the game ends. But this couldn't have been the original ending, right? Glitchtrap must have changed it by being in the game. This is shown to us by the fact that he is an anomaly, something that isn't supposed to be in the game. Something that Tape Girl tried to contain, but couldn't. Something that the announcer in this game reminds us to ignore on a regular basis whenever we come out of the tape room. He's there by mistake, so why does he have such a big role in the game? He shouldn't. The ending was altered by Glitchtrap as indicated by the announcer repeating the words bye bye until we fade to black. That sounded a hella off to me, as it was repeating itself because for some reason we weren't gone. Glitchtrap altered the ending to this game. The question is, from what? Number 4, Unkillable. Following Michael Afton rotting and regurgitating Ennard, it's implied that Ennard still somehow escapes and lives on. You can see its eyes peer out from the sewer. Michael Afton also still somehow miraculously survives after Circus Baby's voice is heard telling him that he won't die. One of the most frightening things about this is that it's basically implied that Ennard is immortal, and potentially all animatronics maybe are. You can vomit them up as or chop them up into little pieces, and apparently they can still come back, so. Number three, Ennard. In Sister Location, Ballora ends up getting scooped out, and her parts are actually used to help create Ennard. Her endoskeleton is used to form his upper body, and her eyes are actually used to help him disguise himself more successfully as a human, as hers are smaller and more human-like than most of the other animatronics. Number 2, Collective Consciousness. During a conversation that was hosted on the Scott Games website, we discovered that Ennard actually had a hive mind, made up of the animatronics that it is physically composed of. Circus Baby always appeared to be the leader of the group in FNAF Sister Location, but in this conversation it is revealed that eventually the hive mind of Ennard kicked her out from its mind and body. What's more scary than one really messed up animatronic? How about a bunch? All rolled into one hive mind. Yikes. Number 1. Messed Up Clown Back to the full look of Ennard. When it's wearing its mask and hat, it definitely resembles a clown. It not only has a clown face on its mask, but the tangled wires that make up its body in the front, just under its head, are kind of made to look like a big droopy clown bow. It also has a big red button in the center of the bow, like a button that you might see on, I don't know, a clown's outfit. This might not be scary to all, but to those who are terrified of clowns, I'm pretty sure it's a frightening sight to see. Out 10, Resurrection. Glitchtrap is a virus that was scanned into the game we are testing in Help Wanted. Help Wanted is a very odd game story-wise. We play as a playtester who is testing the Freddy Fazbear experience, which is the in-universe game. The anomaly, as it's referred to by Tape Girl, was actually generated when Fazbear Inc. provided the company that created the game with hard drives that they were meant to scan to use in-game. They supposedly contained code that would help make pathfinding easier and just make actually coding the game easier. However, it ended up creating something, an anomaly that started slowly controlling the game code, the one we now know as Glitchtrap. But the thing is, this isn't the first time we've seen the character, he just wasn't in this form. Unit 9 Merging One of the endings of FNAF VR has you merging with Glitchtrap, and while most of YouTube thinks that you and Glitchtrap are just switching places, that's not what merging means. <laughs> I'm different. I actually listen. So if you take the actual definition of merging, meaning to combine, then the end of the game really shows us that we are in fact becoming one with the glitch trap. Why does he need us? We don't know yet, but assumingly he will be the villain of the next FNAF game, so maybe we will learn more about it then. But basically, this point is that we are merging with Glitchtrap, not switching places with him. Sorry to burst your bubble, MatPat, but honestly, it kinda feels good. Just kidding, MatPat, I love your videos. Please don't block me. 
created a game tag. The game files always have their own way of naming things. Later that night for FNAF 6's Midnight Motorist game, etc. And FNAF VR isn't any different. While we all refer to him as Glitch Trap, in the game he is referred to as the Anomaly by Tape Girl, and I guess technically the announcer who tells you not to interact with any of the tapes. But the game itself calls him Spring Bonnie Man, no spaces. This is what first tipped people off as to the identity of the masked killer. Well, along with the suit, the color of the bow, the color of his eyes, the fact that one certain individual is the only actual killer that we've seen. He is the only killer, right? The animatronics themselves don't count because they were made by him, so I'm pretty sure he was the only one. Number 7, Valora's Endoskeleton. If you mess up when following Circus Baby's directions on night 5, you will find out just who is with Circus Baby and get to meet Ennard, who Circus Baby refers to as Valora when you're sneaking through the vents. You can also see the outline of Ennard when performing maintenance on Baby. Its head and eyes can be seen peering over each side of Circus Baby. You might not notice it, but if you look for it, you definitely will, and it's definitely creepy. Number 6, the suit. The suit that Glitch Trap wears is where's the right word? Like, I mean, he is literally confirmed to be a video game entity, and they can't really wear stuff. The Glitch Trap suit seems to be fairly reminiscent of probably the first suit that Afton wore while working with or testing suits for Fazbear Inc., since he was on the robotic side of things and Henry was the creative and business side. Because obviously before they had Springlock suits, they had to have normal suits. Notice the stitching around his joints and the five fingers, showing that someone would have had to be inside. Plus, the suit looks nothing like the Bonnie we know today, be it the normal Bonnie or hell even spring trap. Those all have open joints unless it's a plate along the elbow and not as many fingers if it's not one of the two suits that double as both animatronic and suits. So clearly old Willie Afton learned his lesson about those spring locks. Time to go back to basics I suppose. Number 5. Sharp Teeth. Despite not being a nightmare animatronic and not being animal themed either, Ballora oddly enough still has razor sharp teeth in her mouth for some reason which mostly appear to be there in the game to frighten you, as I couldn't really see any practical use for them, unless it's killing the children that she teaches how to dance, like maybe because she eats them. She has a few more human or dull looking teeth in front, but behind them are rows and rows of razor sharp teeth. So watch out, don't put your hand in there. And for fan name, it's actually kind of ironic. I've been calling him Glitch Trap this whole time, but the name was actually given to him by fans. There is no canon source that refers to him as Glitch Trap in game. Tape Girl calls him the Anomaly, the game code calls him Spring Bonnie Man, and there are no references to Glitch Trap anywhere else in the game files. It was actually a name given to him by the community due to the similarities between him and Afton. Because at that point we only thought he was Afton, but we couldn't be sure. This is also the only point where we actually physically see Afton in game. We, sure we've seen Purple Guy and Springtrap, but those were only shadows and a hardly alive version of him. This is the closest we get to seeing his real proportions and really seeing how he is built in the eyes of Scott Cawthon. And thinking of that is pretty terrifying. Number 3, Impervious to Fire. Once again we're turning to prove just how immortal it is, Ennard also appears in the FNAF VR game Help Wanted. In Help Wanted you face off with Ennard during the level where you also must work to repair the vents at the same time. At the end of the level Ennard is seemingly defeated when it is set on fire, except that it isn't. In the black light mode of the level you'll discover that Ennard actually somehow survives, proving once again just how undefeatable Ennard really is. Chop it up, set it on fire, it'll just keep coming back. Ennard is on some kind of Terminator level sh**. Ultimately, and at number 2, Plushy. After defeating Glitch Trap in the 16 tapes ending, the one where you get sealed behind a steel door, Glitch Trap turns into a plushie beside you. This is reminiscent of the Plush Trap animatronic introduced in the fun and Plush Trap minigame in FNAF 4's Hallway. The one we get in Help Wanted though is more of an actual plushie than a crazed robotic killer, and glows in a neon green fashion instead of the normal yellow associated with the suit used by Afton. Wait. Does this make Afton a furry? A furry is defined as, in particular, a person who dresses up in costume as such an animal character with human characteristics, or that uses one as an avatar online. And I think killing kids in a yellow bunny suit in this scenario will count as being a furry, since also this is his avatar in this game instead of the iconic purple shadow. I think it counts even more. <laughs> Finally, in number one, voice line. 
Now, with a full game like FNAF VR, there is bound to be plenty of lines of dialogue. In the original game, Scott was the phone guy himself, obviously, which cut back on costs. But Ultimate Custom Night is really where the voice department had an expanded budget thanks to Scott's mattress full of money from the other games in the series, and all those facial tissue sales. But when it comes to FNAF VR, we didn't get as much. We got the announcer from Pizzeria Simulator, we got Tape Girl, and we got Scott as Phone Guy again with the typical grunts and moans from the other games in the series. But one character who was distinctly lacking in voice lines was the main antagonist of the game, Glitch Trap. Out of everything that's happened in the game, he really only has one line of voice dialogue, yeah. And it's only heard if you beat him during the 16 tapes ending. He opens the door, shushes you, and then walks back into the darkness behind him. Out of all the times we see this character or he's mentioned, the only time we hear him speak is him telling his victim to shut up. That's hella creepy if you ask me, and a fitting line for such a terrifying and iconic character. And a 10 designed for kids. All Funtime animatronics were designed to entertain kids. However, knowing what we do about the man behind the designs, we know that's not what they were meant for in the long run. Sure, it's an easy facade. It makes sense why these robots would be so close to kids because they're entertaining them. It's what they were designed to do. But when I say designed for kids, what I really mean is designed to swallow them whole like the deepest pits of hell and keep them inside a special child containment unit inside their so, so that William Afton can kill them and use their spirits for experiments with Remnant, a metallic alloy of animatronic endoskeleton and child soul juice. Child soul juice, now that I think about it, sounds like something else entirely, because it's used to make children and their souls, unless they're ginger. I am allowed to say it, I'm a ginger too, I just took enough souls that it doesn't really look like it anymore. I have a picture on my Instagram, it's just bright red. Ah. Uh. And nine best buds. For those of you who have just looked at a picture of Funtime Freddy, you can probably see that he's not alone. The Bonnie puppet on his hand is named Bon Bon and is designed like the original Bonnie animatronic, but with the color scheme of Toy Bonnie from FNAF 2. But there is more to this puppet than meets the eye. Bon Bon actually helps calm Freddy down as seen in the Breaker Room minigame during Night 2 of Sister Location, the fifth game in the FNAF series. I don't know how an animatronic hand puppet calms another animatronic down, especially when they aren't even possessed at this point, only becoming possessed after being combined with a remnant and creating entered along with the other sister location animatronics. The only animatronic from that game that's possessed at this point is Baby. Nevertheless, Bon Bon acts as a sort of mini conscience that also decides to kill you during another mini game in that very same game. Ha, <sighs> ah, gotta love those killer consciousness -ses. Consciousnesses? Consciousness I? Consciousness? And at 8 taking control. The sister location animatronics get combined into one in the form of Enner at the end of the game. Well, technically not since the actual ending has you getting scooped and the endo spaghetti being shoved inside you, but the actual entity of Enner was originally mostly controlled by Circus Baby. See the clown face and the fact that Baby was the most popular character and basically the main antagonist of the game considering how it's your sister because she was possessed by Elizabeth Afton and she's the reason why you're down there in the first place. And while that's all well and good, things don't really stay that way. During the story sometime between games 5 and 6, Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator, Baby and the rest of the Ennard clan get into a fight. After this fight, as shown in the source code for scottgames.com and fnafworld.com, Baby gets ejected or removes herself from the Ennard clan. After this, they need to find a new face, and that's where the creation of Molten Freddy comes from, from Pizzeria Simulator. Funtime Freddy takes control of Ennard when Baby leaves a power vacuum, and that's why Ennard goes to using a Freddy face, because it's... Freddy's controlling. Number 7, Escape Attempts. Speaking of escaping, near the end of Sister Location, when you enter the scooping room, if you follow Circus Baby's instructions, it will be revealed to you that Circus Baby intends to use you as a costume, like a skin costume, so that her and the other animatronics can escape Circus Baby's entertainment and rental. What you also learn is that Circus Baby knows firsthand that escaping the facility is not possible, unless she is hiding in a human body, as it seems that she has in fact tried to escape before, but is always returned. She says there is nowhere for her to hide in her standard form, or for the other animatronics to hide for that matter. It's scary to think what she could have accomplished during her other brief escapes before she returned to the facility. Probably nothing good though. 
and its six stuck together. Speaking of being thick. While having your best friend stick with you through thick and thin is amazing, it can still sometimes be too much and you might need a break before you actually snap their neck. But in this situation, these two puppet pals, Bon Bon and Funtime Freddy, might actually be stuck together. Looking at the blueprints for the Funtime Freddy animatronic shows us that there isn't really a hand inside of Bon Bon and it's just more wiring. That makes sense since it's literally just one robot and there's no way a giant robot hand is gonna fit into that little puppet. It's like when you see a couple and one of them is like seven foot tall and the other one's five foot nothing. Oh, the amount of times I've seen that is kind of concerning. However, this is weird because FNAF VR's Night Terror Room featuring Funtime Freddy, you can see that he does in fact have another hand. Can he remove Bon Bon and put another hand on? Is this an oversight by the dev team? Or is it just that this is in fact a hand inside of Bon Bon that we aren't seeing in the blueprints or wireframes? No idea. This is a facts list and I have no idea. You're welcome. Quality content. Number five, justified. What's more frightening than a villain with justifications? When a villain appears to be someone we can understand and even in some cases sympathize with or relate to, that is truly the stuff of horror gold because it makes them feel more real and in a twisted way, even though you might be playing against them, you may even silently root for them. In Circus Baby's case and the case of the other animatronics belonging to Circus Baby's entertainment and rental, she wants to escape because she and her friends are tortured every night, constantly shocked by technicians who aim to force the animatronics into performing. They are trapped in the facility and when they don't perform as expected, are either electrocuted, scrapped, or opened up and tampered with. In a 4 Funtime Auditorium. The Funtime Auditorium is a stage room and sister location and is the main setting for the Funtime Foxy Dark Room in FNAF VR. However, this is also the location of Funtime Freddy, who does make an appearance in the Dark Room with Funtime Foxy, and in sister location there is actually a yellow-eyed endoskeleton named Yendo, who can very rarely take the place of Funtime Foxy. Yendo seems to resemble Funtime Freddy with slightly broader shoulders and nothing other than the wire of the endoskeleton. It's very odd and I don't I don't think he makes an appearance in any of the other games, even in FNAF VR or Ultimate Custom Night. But it's still interesting to think that a variation of Freddy Fazbear has his own variation. Perhaps he was the prototype Funtime Freddy? What do you think the purpose of Yendo is? Is he just another endoskeleton or was he something more? Let me know what you're thinking and your theories down below. Maybe he's the Stitch Wraith. Hmm? If you guys want like a Stitch Wraith list, let me know because that would be dope put it in the comments. Number 3 Became Elizabeth Afton As is custom often with the spooky animatronics from FNAF, after Baby killed Elizabeth, she took her spirit within herself, in essence, becoming her somewhat. Elizabeth's soul then became trapped within Circus Baby and would remain trapped for some time. What we don't really know is how much of Elizabeth is actually still in there personality wise. Like do we see any of that? But when Elizabeth died, she definitely lived on in some capacity through Circus Baby, or at least her soul did even if we don't really get to see it. And it's believed that in Sister Location, the character you play as, Eggs Benedict, is Elizabeth's brother and William Afton's son, Michael Afton, who is attempting to save his sister's soul, which is why he takes a job as a nighttime technician at Circus Babies Entertainment and Rental. Or rental and entertainment. Whichever way you want to say it. And a too impractical design. I know that he's a robot from a fictional game series that might even be fictional in the game world, but come on. You have to admit that they could have been designed more practically. When we see these animatronics without their face or hell, even without any of their shell, there's just too much material. We've seen Endo and we've seen Yendo. Endo is a normal animatronic endoskeleton. It would be what Chuck E. Cheese robots use. Or hell, it's even what Trigger Me Elmo uses. But Yendo is just clunky and huge. He has too much metal for those things to make sense. It's a waste of material and money that no company would approve of. Even if you are using them to kill kids, there is no need to add flesh to your robots. Just have the tank be hidden by the shell. And there is literally no need for the face to come apart like that aside from it making the game scarier. You don't want kids to be afraid of these if you're trying to lure them in, okay? That makes no sense and it's incredibly impractical. Business class, it taught me something. Kind of. Finally, in a number one, it's just an illusion. Everything is not what it seems when you have a little disc that can make you see things. You better run, cause there's trouble if you see normal things. Because everything is not what it seems. But no, with the addition of the sound illusion disc first introduced in the Twisted Ones novel, we can't really trust anything we see anymore. We know that Freddy has a disc on him since we see it when we service him in Sister Location, and we know they exist outside of that since they've also been used on Michael 
Bill in FNAF 4 to make him see the Nightmare animatronics, unless you go by the dream slash coma theory. These discs exist canonically within the series. Hell, it could even be why the Bonnie Paper Pal moves into your office in FNAF 2 and 3. It could be Springtrap using the illusion sound disc on you. It could also explain the hallucinations. Why he couldn't just make himself invisible, I'm not sure, but maybe it can't do that. Everything we know about the series could all just be because of the discs, and hell, even the discs themselves could be because of the discs. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Number 10, pin cushion. Weirdly, a circus baby has a physical feature that makes it feel as though she wasn't uh, completely finished yet. She has pins sticking out of her arms and legs all around her, like she's some kind of animatronic pin cushion. Not only is it creepy because it makes you think of a little clown girl with pins sticking out of her, but it also gives you that unsettling feeling that she's not finished yet, that there was still more work to be done on her. Like she malfunctioned and killed a little girl because there was still that work left as opposed to being programmed for killing. But yeah, knowing William Afton, she, she was probably just programmed for killing. Number 9, Tall. Circus Baby is one of the tallest animatronics in Sister Location, which is terrifying to think about. She's literally a giant, scary clown baby. Circus Baby is, according to her blueprint that we see in Sister Location, 7 feet 2 inches tall. That's it's like really tall, like basket player level of height. Taller even actually than that. She's taller than Shaq. She also is heavy and not an animatronic that you'd want to fall on you as she might actually crush you under her weight, which is listed at 585 pounds. Wow. Number 8, Ennard. Circus Baby was the mastermind behind the terrible endoskeleton animatronic that we know as Ennard. She helped to create and came up with a plan to help the animatronics escape via Ennard by having parts of them used in its creation. And of course, Ennard is the animatronic that either leaves Circus Baby's entertainment and rental inside you, or follows you home if you survive in sister location. Without Baby, there would likely be no Ennard, as she seems to be the brains of this escape plan as well. And it's 7 FNAF AI. Based on a teaser released by Illumix, a company helping with special delivery, we may see Funtime Freddy making an appearance. Now, I don't know how long ago this teaser was released, so I can't really make any decent guesses as to when we will see him, or hell, he may even be already in the game at this point. But as far as I know, he has only been teased based on what I've seen on the Funtime Freddy fandom wiki page. Like, the website fandom. Not like a wiki page about the Funtime Freddy fandom. Is there a Funtime Freddy fandom? I mean, enough of you asked for this video that we ended up doing it, so I'm guessing that there could be? I'm not entirely sure. Let me know down below if you are a Fun Freddy freak or a freaked Fun Freddy. The second one being that you don't like Fun Time Freddy, I think. I don't know. I wrote this, but I don't know. Tell me in the comments because I'm genuinely curious. Do people actually like the Fun Time animatronics? Aside from Baloric is like... Thick. That's some craft peanut butter right there. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Number six, good at pretending. One thing that keeps coming back up in regards to the exploration of Circus Baby's character in Sister Location is that she constantly feels she has to pretend. This should have been an indication earlier on that she wasn't what she seemed actually as it comes up pretty early. We probably shouldn't have trusted her. She also tries to get you to play pretend when she hides you in a suit with spring locks. It is her deceptiveness and cunning skills of playing pretend that often make her so frightening and dangerous as an antagonist. She appears friendly, but is really just very good at manipulating and deceiving others. Halfway through at number 5 was Almost German. This was actually first seen in a MatPat video, I believe. At the start of one of his FNAF theories, he showed us a clip from a live stream of his that showed what the voice actor Kellen Goff originally had in mind, which was a German variation of what we hear normally, which is honestly kind of funny, but also weird. I know that everyone has been assuming this takes place in the United States, but what if it actually took place in Germany? Actually, based on everything that happens in the series, it has to be the US. Probably Florida, if I'm being honest. Can you imagine those headlines? Like, Florida man slaughters 15 children while working for children's pizzeria. Or Florida man dresses like Golden Rabbit in order to kill kids. Honestly, that's probably a thing already, if I'm being honest. I know a bunny man. Oh, he was in the- he's in my hometown. There was a whole kerfuffle, like someone made a whole bunch of fake police posters about him. I read the article. Man, the things that happened there, man, I'm telling you. Oh! Thank God I'm in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, cause nothing like that happens in Toronto. 
Is this a FNAF list or what? Number four, killed Elizabeth Afton. In Sister Location, we learn that Circus Baby actually killed the daughter of William Afton, known as Elizabeth. Well, more we learn that she killed a little girl who is later confirmed to be William's daughter, Elizabeth. Afton warned his daughter about playing with Circus Baby as she wasn't finished yet and could be considered dangerous. Circus Baby then confirmed what he said to be true when Elizabeth snuck off anyways when her dad wasn't looking to play with Circus Baby. Baby lured Elizabeth away from the other children with ice cream, which her body is capable of storing or producing. She then gave into the urges of her programming and killed Elizabeth with her scooping arm, devouring her. Getting close to the end at number three, abilities. Let's treat this like a dating profile, since you sickos love shipping animatronics with dead children. Let's meet bachelor number one. It's Funtime Freddy. He's six feet tall, weighs 350 pounds, but that's all corpses, and has six special features. He has a proximity sensor coupled with grouping coordination to make sure your parents don't walk in on you. And he can even tell what is the best time to get a little crazy with his parental tracking and 360 degree pivot. You spin him right round, baby. And fancy something a little more interesting? Well, with his voice mimic, you can have any partner you want, but be careful of his charms. His luring abilities will have you begging for him to take you back. And with his 100% concealed storage tank, he will. Yes, killers, bachelor number one is a killing machine, literally. Thank you. <laughs> number two, she's gonna scoop you. At the end of Sister Location, if you follow Circus Baby's instructions, you will discover that her plan this entire time was to collect the consciousness of all the animatronics and use their parts to create Ennard. She then lures you into the scooping room and reveals, as Ennard, that she plans to scoop you next. Yay! Disemboweling you so she and the other animatronics within Ennard, within you, can escape the facility. Yikes! Number 1, Scrap Baby. In FNAF 6, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, Circus Baby makes an appearance. After escaping the Circus Baby's entertainment and rental through Ennard and being regurgitated by Michael and then later kicked out of that animatronic collective, she ends up returning to her old form. But she has fallen into disrepair and as such has become the terrifying Scrap Baby, who honestly is more terrifying than shiny polished Circus Baby any day of the week. You will have the opportunity to salvage Scrap Baby for parts in the Pizzeria simulator should you choose, and she is one of the animatronics whose trapped soul is freed at the end of the game, which in her case is the soul of Elizabeth Afton. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then, so let me save you now. It's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms.